Hello there, and welcome back once again to the Sage's Library. I am, as always, your humble sage, Trevor DeVal, and welcome to my library, the library of 40-plus years of role-playing games. And here on this show, we discuss all of them in great detail. It's not really a review show, though, is it? It's more of, like, what I feel and think about all these different games. So there you go. Thank you so much for joining me here again. And if you do want to help support the channel, you can like and subscribe. Or you can join the Patreon. Or you can buy some merchandise. There is a link for that. We are actually going to do some brand new merchandise, handmade right here in the home studio. Uh, there'll be a big announcement about that soon. We're going to have all kinds of cool stuff coming up. New, better shirts and dice bags and and mugs and all kinds of good stuff. So so keep your eyes peeled for the announcement about the new Me, Myself, and I merchandise. In the meantime, here we are at the Sages Library. So today we're going to talk about a game uh, which I find very interesting. This is a game that I've played not a ton of, but enough to have a, well, rather well-educated opinion on it, I think. But the game in question today that we're going to be talking about is... GURPS. That's right, the Generic Universal Role-Playing System by Steve Jackson Games. So, Generic Universal Role-Playing System. When you look at it that way, you kind of think to yourself, well, that sounds a bit bland, doesn't it? At least a lot of people do. I don't particularly think that, but I've heard a lot of people say that about this game. They say, oh, it's not about anything. It's, it's not particular to any one genre or any one style. It's not D&D. It's not fantasy. But the fact is, it is fantasy. And so much more, because this game can be used to play any genre in existence. You can do fantasy, sci-fi, modern, horror, uh, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, quite a game. When I first discovered this game, it was sometime in the early 80s, <laughs> and it was using this supplement right here, Man to Man. This was basically just the combat from GURPS. The thing I love about GURPS, and, and this is the third edition of the game. Uh, right now, I believe GURPS is in its fourth edition, where it's been for a while. Uh, there's not a huge amount of um, difference between third and fourth. There's a couple key things. Uh, but I'm talking about third because that's the game that I've run, so I know it better than fourth. So uh, that's what we're talking about. The GURPS book is great because it has everything you need to play. It's got your character creation, it's got your combat system, it's got your magic systems, it's got uh, a psionics, it's got a, a very limited sort of uh, bestiary in it, uh, it's got some game master advice, it's got a solo adventure in there, sort of a choose your own adventure thing to allow people to figure out how the game works, which I always think is a nice little touch. It really is everything you need in one book, which I'm a huge proponent of. I love games that do that. The Warhammer uh, First Edition Fantasy, which I have talked about on this on the show before, is one of those books where it's got everything you need to play. The one thing that the GURPS book doesn't have, because it is so generic and universal, is setting material. But this is where Steve Jackson Games really shines. GURPS has released over the years almost a, like a near infinite amount of setting books, all which are usable with any game you want. You don't have to play GURPS with it. Uh, really well researched, just a, a, a treasure trove worth of information. There's GURPS Rome and there's there's. GURPS Celt, and there's GURPS Vampire, and there's GURPS Traveler, and there's GURPS Cyberpunk, and there's GURPS, you know, you, you name it, GURPS has done a setting book on it, uh, and they're really, really great. Again, regardless of the system you're actually using. The game itself, the generic universal role-playing system, is at its core very, very simple. Characters are all based on stats and skills, and gear, of course. The stats are very simple, there's four of them. There's strength, dexterity, intelligence, and health. All of your skills in the game, and there is a ton of them depending on the genre you're using. Again, in the main book, it has skills for a ton of different genres because it wants to allow you to be able to play anything you want. But you can go through and sort of pick the skills that are appropriate for your settings. So if you're playing sort of a, a d and kind of fantasy thing, obviously computers is not going to be a skill you're going to need. You've got your four stats, you've got your skills, which are basically based on those stats. So if those stats are, are between 3 and 18... And the entirety of the game is based on a 3d6 roll, pretty much, in terms of how to do things. So if I've got a sword skill of 12 and I want to hit a guy, I'm going to roll 12 or less on 3d6. And that is the core of the game. 
Um, like a lot of games, the core is just just the entry level. It's just it's just it's just a taste, a little taste of what's to come. Because when you go into the minutia of the advanced rules, of which there are many, if you so choose, it's all optional. Then you get into all kinds of wonderful kind of detail that both make the game really interesting in terms of all the things that you're you're detailing, but it can also slow the game down, which is very common with all kinds of games that have optional rules, right? The more options you tack on to the main game, the slower it's going to run. It's just the way it is. So, for example, in a fight in GURPS, if you're just using the basic game, uh, I swing my sword at you, I roll my skill or less, uh, you have an opportunity to defend against it. But if I hit you, then I roll damage and you take... Uh, you take your hit points basically off of your health um, or strength. I can't. That's an optional rule. You can use strength or health, either one. If you get knocked down to zero, basically fight's over. That's the base. Okay. However, the optional rules are many. So, for example, you can decide that you want to use the rules for edge versus thrusting. So what that means is if I'm using a broadsword, well, I can decide to either slash you with it or to stab you with it. And if I slash versus uh, stab you, that's going to do slightly different damage. It might have different effects on different types of armor, that kind of stuff. Again, these are optional rules. Or what's another good example? Hit locations. Uh, you have the option of introducing hit locations and uh, critical hit charts. So if you, I don't know, aim for somebody's leg and do a critical hit, you can roll on the crit leg chart to determine what specifically happens. Again, you don't have to. That's the advanced rules, but of course, I love good gritty rules, so of course I incorporate these advanced rules. There are endless options for this game, and the game is endlessly customizable. You can dial up or dial down the level of detail you want to your heart's content. So it's it's really versatile that way. That's that's a huge strength of GURPS. When you create a character as well, you have, you've got your stats and your skills, but you also have advantages and disadvantages. And these are character traits or um, what what d d players might know as feats. Um, advantages are little things that, well, give you an advantage that you buy with points. Because when you create a GURPS character, it, it, you don't randomly create the character. It's a point buy system. So if you've got 150 points to build a character, you're spending those points on your stats, on your skills, and on your advantages. So if you want to be a really stealthy guy, let's say you want to make sure your dexterity is good, you want to make sure you've got the stealth skill, and maybe you take the advantage of like Skulker or whatever it's called in the book that gives you another little advantage to, to do that specific thing. That is contrasted by disadvantages. When you buy a disadvantage, it's a negative point value. So basically it gives you or, or it offsets the costs for other things. So if you had a disadvantage of, I don't know, blind in one eye or something, that might really affect your depth perception. So maybe your bow skill isn't as good, but the disadvantage cost is five. What that means is you have an additional five points to spend on something else. What I like to use disadvantages for is character hooks. So if, let's say, the character has a disadvantage of a dependent, maybe they have a kid, right? Well, that is a great character hook as a GM. I can use that disadvantage of that character to introduce new character hooks for that character or new storylines for the characters to possibly pursue. You know, it's one thing to delve a dungeon and, and, and grab the treasure, uh, and it's quite another thing to go into that dungeon because your kid has been abducted by orcs and they're about to sacrifice him to their dark god or something, right? So a creative and inventive GM can use those disadvantages to their advantage. <laughs> so as always, with all of these optional rules, um, a game like this, in my experience, and of course this entire channel is about my experience, this entire show, The Sage of the Library, is about my personal experience, yours may vary, but in my experience with games like this, it can read great on paper, but feel a little bulky in play. And that is very much the case here. I love the idea of all the options for character creation and combat and stuff like this in this game, but if you try and implement too much at once, uh, you're going to completely nerf your own game. You're going to completely be swamped by all of the different uh, moving parts. So, uh, you know, that can always be mitigated just by practice and experience. The more you play a game, the more second nature the rules become, and then it's like pow, pow, pow. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're running very detailed, grisly, gritty combats in no time at all because everybody understands the rules. But until you get to that time where you've internalized the rules, where they just kind of immediately come to your mind when you need them, uh, then the game can be a little clunky, kind of like a, a burning wheel, right? I did another Sage's Library on Burning Wheel, and, and one of the things about Burning Wheel is that because there's so many moving parts, if you try to introduce too much at once, 
it could really bog down your game and that can turn a lot of people off. So that's just a word of warning for those of you who might be uh, entertaining uh, GURPS as a system. Just, just remember to just ease into the details. You know, it, it's well worth it. Believe me, it's well worth it if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, but just don't, don't bite off too much at once. I'm going to say something now which may seem silly. <laughs> Uh, and it is, in a way. Um, the central core mechanic for this game is roll 3d6, compare it to a target number, and determine whether or not you're successful. So if I'm trying to sneak past a guard, I'm rolling my sneak skill, which is based on my dexterity, and if my sneak skill is 14, then I'm rolling 14 or less on a 3d6, and if I get that number or less, basically I succeed. Now, here's my problem with it. And I don't mean it as a design problem. It's not a design problem. This is a, this is a Trevor problem. But it's the kind of problem that prevented me from wanting to play this game for too long. There's two problems I have with the 3D6 resolution. Here's the first one. Here's the silly one. My brain, for whatever reason, if I roll three dice and I have to add them and apply modifiers and compare them to a target number, my brain seizes for just a second, just a millisecond. My brain seizes when I see three dice and I have to do that calculation. It's literally just a millisecond. However, it's enough to throw a wrench in my gears as a GM. If I'm trying to keep the pace up of an accession, uh, especially in a fight or something, and I'm rolling dice, my brain just seizes for a second, and I have a, a, a little hiccup, a little mental hiccup. It's super minor, but it's enough to throw me entirely. That's a me thing. It doesn't happen with 2d6. If I played Traveler, for example, Traveler is based on 2d6 plus mods versus a target number. No problem. Two dice is fine. I can look at the numbers, I add them, I do the calculation, boom, boom, boom. But 3d6, for whatever reason, does not work for me. <laughs> I, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm trying to train, retrain my brain. But uh, when I ran GURPS all those years ago, uh, yeah, that, that, was a, that was an issue. And uh, uh, it, I don't know, it's, it's a problem with my own brain. The second issue with 3d6, and this could be controversial, but again, always remember this is just my experience. 3D6 produces a bell curve, which means the vast majority of the time when you roll 3D6, you're going to come up with a result between 7 and 11 or thereabouts, okay? That's just math. That's just the way it works. In D&D or something like D&D, where you're rolling 1D20, for example, you're only rolling one dice, which means that each of those facets on that die have as much chance of being rolled as any other facet. I have as much chance of rolling a two on a d20 than I do as rolling a 20, if I'm rolling one dice. So it can be very swingy, right? I never know what that one d20 is gonna show up with, so my modifiers become very important. With GURPS and a 3d6 system, because you have that bell curve, it means that most of the time your results are average. That's perfectly fine. It, it, a lot of players love that because they can gauge their character's abilities way more easily, right? If they look at that and they go, I've got a 14 skill, they know because the game's based on a bell curve of 3d6 that they are going to succeed a lot of the time. That's, that's totally cool. I get it. But in my experience, what that led to was boring fights. Because most of the time, you're rolling an average roll, that's when you get into the situation in a fantasy fight where... The one guy strikes, the other guy blocks. Then the other guy strikes, and the first guy blocks. And back and forth, and back and forth, until one person rolls something outside of the average roll, and something happens. Again, your mileage may vary on, the, may vary on this, but for me, that was kind of a deal breaker. Now, to be fair, I didn't run a long fantasy game in GURPS, so I can't say that I spent 100 hours running this game or something, okay? So to be fair, it's very possible that if I uh, invested more time as a GM into it, I might have found a, I might have had a different experience, but this is a show about the experience I've had, and that was my experience. So the 3D6 thing, as much as I love the idea of GURPS, as much as there's, there, there's so much in that book that I love, and as much as I you know, would love to run a, a campaign of it, that's the thing that always makes me go, oh, I don't know, the 3D6 hurts my brain, you know? Now, I want to talk a little bit about the fantasy trip, which is basically GURPS version 1. Um, those of you who are uh, devotees of the fantasy trip are probably yelling at your screen right now. But basically, the fantasy trip is an easier version of GURPS. 
and it is. It's based on all the same basic rules. Uh, it's just a little more streamlined. It's a little easier to play. And a big thank you to Steve Jackson Games for actually sending me the box of the renewed version of the Fantasy Trip, which they just released a couple of years ago. Thank you so much for that. It was really great to uh, to have my mitts on on that. But again, it comes back to this 3D6 resolution system. I just don't know if my brain will cooperate with the core rules or not. I'd love to give it a shot, but you know, we'll 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 see what happens. Um, GURPS is a game, as I said, that you can use for any genre you can imagine. It really is a good game. It's not for everybody, of course. Uh, if you like detail, if you like grittiness, if you like hex-based combat, if you like facing to matter, if you like having really deadly sword swings that end a fight with one hit, one or two hits, then I strongly encourage you to check out GURPS. Again, uh, fourth edition is the current edition, as far as I know. Uh, but it's it's really not that much changed from from GURPS third. It's it's essentially the same game, uh, which I think is a testament to the strength of the game. Uh, the the fact that when you change editions, Steve Jackson didn't have to do a bunch of changes in order to uh, to uh, accommodate the new edition. He just made a few little adjustments. I think that speaks very highly of a game. Anytime they can do that, as opposed to wildly changing the game, like D and D third edition did from D and D second edition. That was a completely different beast. But we're not talking about Z and Z, we're talking about GURPS. And as with all these games on my shelf in my library, I would gladly run a game of GURPS if I could find a group to, uh, to play it. Um, it is a quality product, a quality game, and uh, I will always have fond memories of the campaigns I've ran with GURPS. So that's it for the Sages Library. Thank you so much for joining me. And again, if you do want to support the channel, please do hit like and subscribe or check out our Patreon below. And I will see you next time on the next Sages Library.